Welcome everyone, citizens of YouTube. Today we're doing something that occurred to me recently that I've heard a lot on forums but never actually seen any kind of physical proof and that is there's a story in uh, putting microphones in front of a guitar cabinet that even when you put the microphone really close to the speaker the sound of the room makes a really big difference. So today we're going to see if that's true or not. So let's tell you a little about how we're going to do this. So we're going to use my Zilla Fat Baby 1x12 cab with a Vintage 30 in it because everybody knows the Vintage 30. And we're going to mic that up with a Shure SM57 because again everybody knows the SM57. I'm uh, going to use my trusty old uh, PV Windsor head for the reamping, and I'm going to use my Audience ID4 because I can plug this in to my iPad, to which I'm going to use to record, uh, and that means that I don't need to plug it into the mains, I can power this off a little battery bank. And that means that we can go to places I wouldn't usually record. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to record here in my live room, you can't see it because of the white screen, but my live room is going to be test number one. Then we're going to move the entire rig into my vocal booth, which is treated to be really dead. We're gonna go, we're gonna go and do it in my control room as well, which is not quite as kind of large as the live room and has one wall that's really kind of dampened. Uh, then we're gonna get interesting. Then we're gonna go up to the bathroom because I've heard tell that recording things in a bathroom is a really great thing to do, which I'm not sure about, but we'll go up there. And also, I've got a meeting room upstairs, which is really big, high ceilings, quite a long, nice reverb time. So we're going to try it in there as well. And maybe even try it in a couple of different places in that room. So that we can uh, see if where the guitar amp is makes a difference. If you can even hear any difference at all, because the microphone's going to be an inch away from where the grill cloth would be on the cab, there's actually no grill cloth on the cabinet, which I asked the guys from Zilla to do for me because it makes recording a lot easier, I don't have to get a torch out. And it's gonna be in between the cap and the paper, so kind of where a lot of guys would put that. It keeps it nice and simple. So we're gonna get on and without any further ado, I'll put some text on screen so you can see which one's which and let's have a listen. So this is where today's journey begins. This is our meeting room on the ground floor. It's quite large, it's got high ceilings. There's another section just off there, so it's quite large. And the sound without the uh, SM57 sounds like this. Quite a lot of reverb. So let's see how it affects the tone. I'm using Aurea, and I've got a load of uh, tracks that I need to re-amp, which have already been through uh, the virtual amp heads. It's from the same project from the Redback review, if you've not already seen that. So we're going to run it through the Windsor head and then through the Zilla with the SM57 on a Vintage 30. So I just set up the right tracks and I hit record and repeat. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the same meeting room, and this is a bit of a vague attempt to show does being in a different part of the same room make a big difference? I mean, I, I think it does, but let's see how that's demonstrated. I mean, if it's a really big difference, then maybe we'll do a whole video on this, but for now, this is just a does it make a difference quick comparison. So let's see what we get.
as you can see, we're now in the bathroom. Um, do not try this at home. This is on an RCD circuit for safety. There's no water is going to be used anywhere. This is not the kind of thing that I would recommend just because of safety. The only thing that's plugged in is the Windsor. Everything else is running on batteries. And this, like I say, is on a safety RCD. So if you're going to try anything this crazy, be safe. This room sounds like this. It's all tiled, so it sounds like this. So it's quite reverberant, but it's quite short as well. So let's see what that gives us on the guitar. This is uh, our storeroom. It's not the prettiest place, and as you can see, it's where all the uh, AC units go. Uh, but it's not acoustically dead in here. I mean, there's not that much of a reverb tail, but as I'm speaking, I can hear a bit of kind of early reflections, a bit of kind of, I wouldn't call it an echo, but it certainly kind of gives this room a boxy kind of space. So let's see how this sounds. It sounds like this. So you can hear a bit of something, but it's not exactly lively. So here we go. <laughs> this one is our vocal booth. Um, it's very, very dry sounding in here. Um, the walls are designed uh, based around the similar principle to the things you see on like the SE reflection filters where it only lets certain sound through those holes in the metal, then it's absorbed, then it's uh, absorbed again. So it's very, very dry in here and it sounds like this. In fact, the tiny little bit of ring that I can hear in here is actually from the lights behind that for filming, they generally wouldn't even make that sound. So I'm gonna take that light out of here before I hit record. So now we're back in my live room, which is significantly larger than the vocal booth. Um, I have treated the walls with some uh, acoustic reflection foam because there was a bit too much flutter in here when it was designed because everything's kind of plastered and smooth and shiny. Uh, so the live room's a little bit live and it sounds like this. So let's see how it sounds with everything going. Last but not least, we're back in the control room where I usually do a lot of my videos. Uh, if you're watching the videos, you'll see this room quite a lot. Um, this room is slightly reverberant. It's not completely dead because that's weird to try and mix in a dead room. As you can see, the back wall is very heavily treated for the high frequencies to stop any kind of fluttering from the monitors. But behind is actually not particularly heavy, heavily treated. So let's see how that goes on. And it sounds like this. So let's give that a go, get that recorded. And then I've got the lovely arduous task of uh, taking all these and we're gonna make a comparison just after these at the end, all back to back.
Hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. I wonder if you can hear the differences there because especially when something's recorded and then hard panned, it's interesting the subtle differences there that really kind of, it, it, it changes things. So uh, let me know your opinion in the comments, see what you uh, thought of it so we can get some feedback going and keep an eye out for the next set of videos because there's plenty coming, there's more tutorials on the way, more of these kind of comparisons and uh, stick around, I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and uh, check out our Patreon campaign because that helps us to do things like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.